What if I told you you could save over $1,600 DIYing these outdoor Pottery Barn products? I'd hope you'd be saying, how do I do that? I'm going to show you how in today's new episode. Welcome everyone. I'm Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. I also want to thank the Built app for kindly sponsoring this video. Now let's dive into this first DIY Pottery Barn dupe. These Juliet glazed terracotta planters run anywhere from $199 to $999, depending on the size. Let's assume we're recreating the smallest size and head to Dollar Tree for these similar shaped planters with a rounded over edge. This is going to be a quick and easy update, and all we need is some chalk paint and a foam paintbrush. Now, as you can see, I like to refer back to the original photos as much as possible so we can get these dupes as close to the original as we can. And as you can see, the Juliet planners have a white outside. So I'm using white chalk paint. Actually, this is in the color plaster. It's sort of an off-white color. And we're gonna add that to the outside of these Dollar Tree planters, but we're gonna leave that top edge and rim unpainted for now. So I just did one coat of the chalk paint. I really liked some of the texture and the color of the original pots showing through. It makes it look more stone-like versus the plastic vibe that we have kind of going on. Now I need to work on the inside and also that top edge, and that is more of a terracotta color on the original. So we're gonna mix up our own custom paint here using the color pumpkin and just a little tiny bit of the color crimson in that Waverly chalk paint. We're gonna mix this together until we have a nice shade of a terracotta kind of reddish orange bricky color and we're going to take our foam paintbrush paint down into the inside edge and then we're going to come up very carefully i didn't tape any of this off we kept this really easy and quick by just running that foam paintbrush around the top edge kind of meeting up where the white paint starts and it's kind of helpful because these dollar tree pots already have a plastic line where this kind of all comes together so that's a good guidance for where you need to paint down to. So again, I just did one coat just so I could get some of that variance in color. Really loved it. Let it dry. This is what we're looking at so far. Now we can do our planting. So a lot of the pottery barn that I see in their magazines and online has boxwood. So I headed to my local tractor supply store and found these boxwood perfect size little bushes, planted them in there. They were only about $10 each. And as you can see, I made a set of three of these. These look so cute on our front porch and as you can see the originals would have cost you $597 for three of these planters mine costs $33.75 and that's including the bushes that are inside. So I think we did a pretty good job getting the look here. It may not be the natural stone that the Pottery Barn ones are, but we still get the look without the high price tag. Adding a garden to our backyard was a simple way for us to elevate our outdoor space as well. I also have some DIYs for this, so stay tuned. But with using the Built app, it made the assembly and setup of this garden so easy. So what is the Built app? It's a free app that provides 3D instructions on the assembly, installation, maintenance, and repair of thousands of products and hundreds of brands in 10 different languages. Whether you're a professional, DIYer, or everyday person, the app's unique voice, text, and interactive animation makes even the most complicated tasks a breeze. This tower garden was super simple though, especially with the help of the Built app. I like that I can go at my own pace and start and stop when I need to. And if you stop mid project with the Built app, you can easily pick up right where you left off. And the app made me feel more confident before, during, and after the assembly of this garden, knowing that I did it right. The Built app laid everything out and said it was a one person job, but I did appreciate my hubby's help for this one. Extra hands are always helpful. It also said that at the start, this project would take about an hour to build and it was right on with that information too. The Built app may come in handy for your next project, so make sure you click the link in the description box to download the free Built app now. It's a great resource to always have a hand. And as you can see, we went from a pile of pieces to a finished garden quick and easy. So head to that link below, grab the free builds app for yourself. I love it and I know you will too. 
So this garden was actually a special request by my son. He just turned 10 years old and this is what he wanted for his birthday. How fun is that? I think this is the perfect gift. He had so much fun picking out the flowers, the herbs, the fruits and vegetable plants. And then we had such a great time planting this garden together. Now at the time we just used the markers that came with the plants and put them into each one of the shelves, but I thought it'd be fun to make more of a high-end one. So I grabbed these plant labels from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of 10, but can you believe this tower garden has 12 shelves on it? Plus the top part where we have the flowers. So it holds a lot. Great if you have a minimal amount of space to create a garden in, you can get a ton of plants in this thing. And I will also, I will mention, I will link the garden down in the description box below for you as well. But we're going to turn these Dollar Tree labels into, from plastic ones, into ones that look so high end and more like metal using this copper spray paint. You guys, this spray paint is absolutely magical. It is one of my favorite things. You just spray it on two coats and it turns this plastic into what looks like real metal copper. It is amazing. I'll link it down below as well. So I have 10 of those labels and we're going to write on them with a chalk marker. You could use a paint pen, but honestly, I have found that chalk markers are so much better. They go on so much more smoothly. They're going to hang on. The paint is going to grab on to the surface and I'm just using it to write each one of the the herbs and the plants on here so we can take them out to our tower garden and add them in there. Now you could do this with any kind of plant. So if you just have flowers, you can do it with those. If you have fruits and vegetables, herbs, you can do it with those. Just make sure you do add a clear coat of spray to them front and back so they can withstand all the watering that you're gonna do, the sunshine they're gonna go through. So we're gonna remove all of the old labels and replace them with these new beautiful, fancy looking copper labels. This was such an easy way to elevate this garden. Obviously it looks so nice already, but now it just has that little extra special touch of a high end look and feel. My son and I are already looking at recipes to create with his herbs. So if you have any good recipes or links to a recipe you wanna share with us, please link that down in the comments below. We would love to already get going with making some recipes with his plants. All right, so let's talk about this Pottery Barn Veda Tall Planter that is $109. I wanted something like this for our front porch, and I found the best knockoff and dupe at Sam's Club for less than half the cost. $49.98 if you can get your hands on them at Sam's Club or hopefully order them online and pick them up in store. Can you believe this? saved $60. What a great find. They are so pretty. Add a simple fern to it or plant however you want. And quick and easy, not necessarily a DIY here, but definitely a pottery barn dupe that is going to save you a bundle. Now this is a DIY. This tall black pedestal fountain from Pottery Barn is $999. We're going to make our own for far less than $100. We're going to grab a giant bowl. This is a 12 quart mixing bowl that I found in Marshall's $14.99. And our dupe we're going to make is going to be black, just like the original. And you can see how big this bowl is. It's pretty good sized. And since this is going to have water in it, it's going to be outside. Instead of spray painting it, which I knew was going to chip, I'm coming in with black chalk paint for this. This is going to grab onto our metal perfectly and we are going to get a longer lasting effect to this paint. Of course, over time, you're probably going to have to touch up the paint, but we're going to start off on the best foot we can here and give it three coats of chalk paint on the inside first. You can see this is what it looks like after three coats have dried. We're going to flip this over. We're going to repeat the process and do three more coats of the black chalk paint to the bottom side too. All right, so here we are. We are three coats in on both sides. We are going to use some clear spray paint now to coat this, protect it. It's gonna help protect it from the sun so it doesn't weather and wear. And we're gonna give this two coats on both sides using a clear matte spray. 
And then guess what? We are going to use that same Sam's Club planter as the base of our fountain. Add the bowl on top. That's going to give us the look of the original Pottery Barn one that we're going for. And then we can start obviously turning this into an actual fountain. To do that, I have the bottom of a planter that I put on the bottom. It's going to help raise up our fountain in there. Use some Dollar Tree River rocks that I washed off and put in there. And then you definitely want to make sure that you have access to sun for this because we're using a solar powered fountain. You guys have seen me use this one before in other DIYs. I love this one. I will link it down below along with everything else I'm using in today's video. Just make sure you have access to sunshine. Add your little fountain to that. Put some rocks over it and around it. Add the water to your fountain. And once the sun hits the solar panel, you have an instant fountain. So how cute is this? I still think this looks so close to the original and it definitely didn't cost anywhere near the thousand dollars that the Pottery Barn one did. This one actually only cost about $95. That's basically because that includes the fountain and the rocks and the base and the bowl. So it adds up a little bit, but still over 90% off. Now I've always loved these monogram moss letters from Pottery Barn, but they are $79 each. If you head into Hobby Lobby, you can find these large scale letters. They are made out of wood, $12.99. 40% off this day, so hang out until they go on sale. They'll only be $8.80. We're also gonna get this moss. I fell in love with this because it's a sheet that is easy to cut and peel and stick. So $12.99 for that, but you can always use the Dollar Tree moss as well and glue it on. What we needed to do is take the hanger off the wood letter, and then I was already impressed with this moss. It's the first thing I opened it. It was twice the size that I was expecting it to be. It unfolded twice, making it the exact perfect size for this letter H that will soon be hanging on my front door. So we're gonna flip the moss sheet over to the back. Same thing with the letter, flip it over on the back or on the front side. So wrong sides are touching. And then we're going to take a Sharpie marker, outline the wood shape onto the moss sheet, easily cut this out with a pair of regular scissors. It was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be and always save those scraps. Don't toss them. They are gonna be great for another project in the future. Put them back in the bag, seal it up, tape it closed, and they'll be good to go for another project later on. So once we get our letter completely cut out, you can see it is already looking so, so good. Now to attach this moss sheet onto our wood letter, we're going to do this in smaller sections. So just peel a little bit off, stick it onto the letter, leave the rest of the backing on and work your way down to the bottom. A tip I have here too, is make sure to wipe off any dust and moss that might be hanging on to the wood before you stick this down. It is super sticky, so it works really, really good and it's going to last and last. Lastly, we're going to add a hanger to this. I didn't have any satin ribbon like the Pottery Barn version showed, but I did have some white burlap ribbon, again from Hobby Lobby, that I just tied a knot into and then cut down to size, flipped the letter over, and then attached the burlap on with some staples. I have shared this before. I'm going to share it again. It is a battery powered staple gun that you recharge. It is so awesome. It has a USB charger. I love this because it is quiet. It doesn't kick. It doesn't hurt your hand. It's just a quick trigger pull and you've got some instant staples. We're going to cut off any of the excess tails. I'll mention it too. I will link the staple gun down in the description box below if you're interested in that, but it was just that quick and easy to make a pottery barn style monogram moss letter that is so beautiful simple and classy looking theirs was 79 dollars. mine only cost 21 dollars. so a great bargain here I'm obsessed with this next idea. I love this trellis. It's $49.50 at Pottery Barn. Ours is going to be like less than $5. We're going to grab an 8x10 sized stretched canvas from Dollar Tree and cut the canvas fabric off of the frame. You just take a knife, cut around the backside, and then rip all that fabric off. It doesn't look, have to look nice on the backside. We're going to flip it over and use the other side anyway. You're also going to need these long bamboo barbecue skewers, four of those out of the pack, also from Dollar Tree. 
We're going to take some hot glue and we're going to add some glue to all four corners of the inside of this frame. And then we're going to stick those barbecue skewers into those corners and kind of gather them at the top at a point. To keep the points together, we're going to use a rubber band and let it sit, let the glue dry. And then we need to more permanently attach the barbecue skewers to the corners. We're going to do that with some regular floral wire cut down to about 12, 16 inches of length, and then just wrap it around the frame and also each one of the skewers to keep it in place. Twist it, cut down any excess. We don't want any of these kind of sticking up and poking out. This is what it's going to look like once you get all four of those corners wired up. We are about good to go. Now for the top. So I did add a rubber band to the top. That's not going to last very long. It's probably going to dry out and pop at some point being out in the elements. So we're going to take some jute, tie that on. And this is the extra special added touch. These are little finials that go on the top of metal fences. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They come in a set of 10 for less than $20. We only need one for this project, so you'll have a few extra. I'm using some E6000 at the top here and just setting that finial on top to make this all look like one nice cohesive piece. I'm using some black matte spray paint and everything is getting a good three coats of this. It takes a little bit. It was 40, 40 mile per hour winds that day, but we got there. I am totally obsessed with this. Theirs was almost $50. Mine was $5.55. That's what the finials, the finials break down to only $1.80 and they are heavy cast irons. They're really great, great for projects that you might have in the future. Keep them on hand. Here's another look at the before of all the originals and then a version of mine that were 93% cheaper than the Pottery Barns. We all love saving money and making our homes beautiful, but I also want to remind you, don't forget to head down to the description box and click to download the free Built app. Thank you to them again for sponsoring this video, and thank you to all of you who continue to click on those links. It's a wonderful way to support me, this daily DIYer channel, and continue bringing you these free tutorials. I would love to hear which one of these projects was your favorite. Let me know down in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Have a creative day.